Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Have You Ever Played podcast, the only podcast on the internet that can boast about frying an egg on a sidewalk during a hot summer day. That's relevant if you watched the other podcast on this uh, similar topic. But anyway, I'm Matt, a.k.a. Matt Fondude, with my host, co-host again, uh, James. You want to say hi, James? Hi, I'm James. Uh, James 4 e on most social media platforms and James 4 e on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And where it counts, James 4 e standard on the Have You Ever Played podcast. Oh, um, today is a side quest episode because neither James nor I was able to finish Mario 64. Uh, <laughs> turns out the game's longer than you think. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think we both had the same experience of the first half of the game was like 20 minutes. It's like, oh, we just we already just banged through two Bowser doors. And then the second half of the game is like, oh, this is this is the game now. We're in the game. Yeah, I remember um, I, I saw the first Bowser door and I'm like, wait, only eight stars. Come on, this game's going to be quick. Then I'm at the second one. I'm like, oh, 30. Well, that's, I'm going to have to do some backtrack. And then I, and I said at the end, like I literally said out loud, huh, next they're going to do 70. Well, yeah, I uh, I haven't even gone through the 50 door or whatever. The one that's where you can go to um, uh, the, I forget what it's called. The, the, the one where there's the floor that has the mirror room for no reason. Oh, yeah, I know. I know yeah. What you mean. Um, but we'll, we'll get there eventually. That'll be my goal this week. But for this week's episode, uh, we're going to do a little throwback to a previous episode with Ryan where I asked him what his most played games on Steam are. Uh, the top 10 and uh we're gonna do that with james because i thought that was a fun segment i'm probably not gonna repeat my top 10 i maybe i'll give you my later down the list games as well and i'll talk about those a bit uh i think that could be a good format i'll just talk about things i didn't talk about and uh yeah let's just get right into it so james what's your number one most played game on steam and what's the hours on it uh you probably already know this one it's dota 2 um 6,958 hours. Okay, that blows any of my top games out of the water. Just for reference, Gary's Mod, my number one game with 1,398 hours. Man. Yeah. So um, why Dota 2? Yeah, well, I think it's a it's a phenomenal game. I think um, <clears throat> so like if you ever played a MOBA, like League of Legends or something before, you generally you know, you know what like is going on. It's basically two Two teams have to destroy the enemy base. There's a bunch of towers standing in the way. There's various objectives around the map, like, um, <clears throat> like you know, obviously the jungle. Um, there's Dota has these things called outposts, which you can just capture them and like, give you some like XP every few minutes. Um, you have this thing called Roshan, which is like a neutral, a big neutral creep that if you kill it, it'll drop an item that basically gives you a second life. Um, and what makes the game so great is the way that you have to play around these objectives with um with both your hero picks and your your warding and um matchups, laning stage, the towers you take at like what time, because towers end up giving you map control. Um <clears throat> and just you know, all sorts of things kind of mixed together, like itemization and things like that. And I think it's a very it's a both a simple and a complex game at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it kind of jarring for some people. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the game to everybody because I know it doesn't match with, with some people just naturally um, because of the way it's... I, I think initially uh, the game had a very bad tutorial, so that was turning some people off. But I think even with the tutorial that they have now, there's there's just too, a little too much hidden complexity in the game. Do you remember when you started... Uh, playing Dota, like what year? Um, just give it was reference. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Freshman year of high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have Dota. I have Dota two as my eighth most played game. Weirdly enough, uh, two hundred twenty two hours. Even though I don't play that game or necessarily enjoy it, um, it's just one of those games. I guess it is one of those games where each each match is like an hour. So yeah, that's like two hundred matches basically played um yeah. about give or take and i think also each match is very unique because the game has i think 123 heroes now mm -hmm. and it's it's 5v5 you can't have duplicating heroes on on opposing teams 
So it's guaranteed 10 different oh, heroes really? every game. Yeah. I didn't know that. In League, can you have duplicating characters? Um, or? I believe you can in unranked games. Okay. Interesting. Um, I have yeah. a little experience with League of Legends and Dota 2. Um, actually, I was saved from being addicted to League of Legends probably because when I first started playing League, uh, I was playing with a friend who didn't like it. So he's like, let's oh, stop playing. I'm like, I like this. This will be cool. And then we just didn't play it together. So I'm like, I, I'm, I could have been like Naruto. We talked about before. It's like, I could have been the person who was really into league and Naruto. I would have been a completely different person. Uh, just, yeah. Su- yeah. <laughs> I remember um, when I, when I tried league, um, there was this character I really liked called Ezreal. Right. And I was, mm-hmm. I played it like so much for like one week. And and then like I remember I got on one day and I'm like wait where's Ezreal because they rotated the free characters and I'm like well this sucks we're not gonna play this game. Oh yeah, because you so yeah. I will say big ups to Dota two for having all the characters be free. <clears throat> uh, it really is nice that you can play around and choose your mm-hmm. different characters. Uh, League of Legends, it's kind of trivial to unlock care like it's not a big deal to unlock characters. It's just like annoying that you don't have the choice yeah um so i think part of the issue with um with that monetization uh as far as like you know paying for characters or like uh you can also play the game enough to get like points for the characters but um i think the issue that i've personally had in apex is starting to run into this issue as well is um when players first pick up the game like let's say none of the default characters really like suit you and you're you're looking at all these other characters and you're like and you're like, I might like this. Um, I th- think that the game needs to include some sort of like trial period, so that you don't end up like wasting your your money or whatever. I I believe League has that. I'm sure League I'm not, has I'm not 100% uh, like. Sure. I when I played League recently, it really wasn't a big deal to get a character. Um, you mm-hmm. kind of want to pick like. A cup, and there's always the free characters or whatever. It, it still is a little like annoying, um, it, to get into the game. And I, I think that League of Legends and Dota two and MOBAs for me are homework games. I don't know if you can mm-hmm. agree with this. Where I stress out about playing those games because I think I'm I'm worried. And I'll play support in those games too. So you actually need to mm-hmm. know like ward placement stuff like that. Um, so I've spent many hours watching video tutorials on like how to play the game conceptually before ever trying to play the game. And then I'm like, well, this isn't as fun because I'm trying to figure out all these things. And I I, I can understand why some people might find fun in the complexity of having so many systems and Dota two, especially with their active items and stuff like that. There's just a lot going on that you have to keep track of. And uh, yeah, I just, I like the fighting like the team fights and there is a game i forget the name of it i don't think it's actually even live anymore where they just took moba combat and it's just fighting like team fights there's no laning or anything it's just the team Mm -hmm. fights aspect and i like playing i guess league more specifically like that aspect of things i just don't like the laning and all the uh advanced stuff and also you can talk about how dota 2 has like denying creeps and like what were you talking we were playing a game of dota 2 once and you're like, Matt, you need to like leash the creeps into the camp because uh, it was a yeah. bug, but now it's a feature. And um, I'm like, oh god, I don't like, I don't like when games do that. So uh, a cool thing about Dota is that, uh, it, so it was originally a mod for Warcraft Three, um, and there were lots of like janky features, like um, <clears throat> if you pulled a creep camp, so so the the neutral creeps camp spawn every minute, uh, and Normally, you would assume, okay, I'll just kill the camp every minute, then it will respawn. But if you actually pull a creep camp out of its, like, spawn box before the minute happens, like, if you do it at, like, 53 seconds and they're out of the spawn box at, like, one at like one minute, um, then a new camp will actually spawn. Because they have, like, this area where they say, like, if any unit is in this area, the camp won't spawn. So, like, if, if you, like, sit in a camp that's about to spawn, they won't spawn. Um and so what ended up happening is people started, like, stacking the creep camps. So instead of having, like, your carry come to this creep camp and farm it every minute, they just farm it all at once at, like, at, like 10 minutes or something. Um, and it was just, like, a big a big efficiency thing. Uh, and also you can pull the neutral creeps into your lane, and they'll aggro your lane creeps if they're close enough. So then the other team has to, like, come over and, like, come out of the lane to actually get the creeps, and then you're, 
your lane partner can just farm the enemy creeps for free, basically. You see, some people live for that kind of stuff and optimi small optimizations. <clears throat> and I guess from my perspective, as someone who's played Smash Brothers, there's uh, specifically melee. There is an element in that game where you want to do like wave dashing, L canceling, or whatever. It's these tiny things. Uh, that you don't technically have to do, but it's optimizations. But if you're trying to be good at the game, you have to do it, basically. Um, stuff like that, if I don't find the mechanic fun, it bothers me so much that I won't even play the game. Like, I won't even bother. Mm -hmm. uh, Rocket League is a game where I think the advanced mechanics are actually interesting and fun. Although, I will say in Rocket League, I think there's something called like diagonal flipping, which I never really got into. I forget. I think it's called like quick boosting. I don't actually remember the terminology. I haven't played that game in a bit. But if there's tech in games that is in a competitive game that you have to do at a higher level, even if I'm, I shouldn't do it. Like here's the deal. Um, I get into this analysis paralysis sort of when it comes to these games, where I will watch so many tutorial videos and then I'll see the like not even pro players, but like better players doing things that I don't have to do at my level and I'll just get intimidated and I won't even like boot up the game. Uh, that's specifically with MOBAs because I don't know what items to build to build to counter build enemies. And I know I could learn my playing, but I, I feel pretty intimidated to play with randoms in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in that game. Cause I also as playing support. They're just going to be like, why are you just being terrible? And I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Even, I don't even know why I'm bad. Yeah, I think um, that's the thing with a lot of competitive games where it's like, I, I remember there was this quote I saw on Twitter. It was, it was something along the lines of like, in a, in a competitive game, if something is op is optional, it's not really optional. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, I think uh, this is getting into the next game a little bit, but in Apex Legends, there's this thing called tap strafing, which is like, a, it's like this old source engine thing where like, you can like stack lurches, which is essentially like, your, your character like turning in the air mm -hmm. um so you can do like these hard like 90 degree even like 180 degree turns um when you jump and obviously like that that makes you a lot harder to hit right and it's like um how you do it is you you're supposed or how you're supposed to do it is you literally just mash your w button because you're stacking like forwards lurches and then you hold like a or d to like choose a direction um, but people found out you can just bind your W, your like move forward to scroll wheel. Oh, okay. So, so now people just like jump. So now people basically like jump, they hold down like A or D and they scroll wheel and like look in the direction that they want to go in. Um, <clears throat> and when it initially came out, people were like, oh, this is like kind of, kind of cool thing, but like, and it's, it's not necessarily essential, but you can get some like micro advantages from it that could end up like winning you a, a, a fight or a 1v1 or something and it's like it's kind of like at that point if, if there's if even if like in one in 1000 situations it'll win me a fight like that might be worth it if i'm like trying to be like really really good at the game i think it kind of comes down to at least my personal aversion for that kind of stuff i think if i understand the basics fully in a game first then there's like, hey, you can optimize it with this aspect. Mm -hmm. I think that could be cool. I just get so overwhelmed by the advanced techniques that I never learned the basics, and then I just overthink it. And ga a game like, uh, there's a game called, um, what is the game where it's survivors versus killers? Oh, Dying Light. Wait, yeah. no. Is it Dying Light? Oh, no, Dying Light wait. is the parkour thing. Um, Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight, yes. That game is always free on sale. I think I own it on Epic for free or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I don't want to get into that game right now because it has had so many years of meta and craziness mm -hmm. that it's like, do I get into, how do I get into this competitive game in current year? And I think games like For Honor have suffered from that too, where it's an ongoing game that has been infinitely updated, but how is a new player going to jump in like 10 years down the line? And I guess that's what they're kind of doing with Overwatch 2. They're like, yeah. oh, it's a new game. Come and play it now. Um, but again, people who've played it before, they're always going to have that knowledge. Um, yeah. And it's hard to get new people in. I think that um, as games do get older, they're, 
it is kind of important or it's kind of inevitable that there, that there will be some sort of like dumbing down of the mechanics sort of like like an overwatch right um having one tank does actually make the game like simpler um and i think like that made it a little bit easier to get into so i i think like not not all games do it i think that's like i i don't necessarily think it's the only approach but i think it's the easiest approach to avoid the almost the almost power creep of your of your game's complexity for new players yeah interesting you use the word power creep because that just kind of reminded me of runescape uh did you ever play like old school runescape or like i guess runescape when it was when it was old school i guess when it was yeah. originally out you know what i mean yeah i i played it a li- little it was like um in elementary school i played a lot of like browser games like adventure quest and stuff like that mm-hmm. and that was just like one of the ones i played <laughs> i remember you, yeah it, i just remember even back then i was like wow this looks so bad <laughs> <laughs> like even yeah. back in like in like what like 2007 <laughs> just I'm, flexing I'm, on jagex is like yeah. you're like sucking your thumb or something i don't know that's not that's oh, a little man. too uh too it's old for that too, but yeah <laughs> you're just like man this game sucks yeah I don't know, um, it was weird but yeah i did play it a little bit but yeah current old school runescape has issues with power creep because in that game uh it's so mechanically simple it is you left click on something and you attack and mm-hmm. however people in pvp and in harder boss content there there's a thing called prayer flicking in harder boss content and tick eating and the mechanics are yeah so the mechanics are for prayer flicking you can click manually click your prayers on and off to save on your prayer points or whatever and that was an kind of an exploit so you could stay longer in areas and it's also annoying to do but jagex made it a mechanic that is necessary for harder content because they don't have anywhere to go with that mm-hmm. like the content so it's like oh we can't it's every mechanic is just click on something and they're running out of like ways to make you move to certain areas and the pvp in that game is super intimidating to get into because it's full loot pvp we uh well you drop most of your things you can save certain stuff Mm -hmm. but basically you have to do a bunch of clicking and like weird (laughs) weird clicking maneuvers and stuff like that which is like the pvp and it's just like doesn't appeal to me and it, and it's it just very exclu- it excludes uh any newcomers and they're having issues with that and that's a whole different topic. Uh so your number yeah. 2 game was Apex? Yeah, Apex Legends. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, I generally I'm actually not like too into BRs outside of Apex, but I think I I was always into really into Titanfall. Like I think it's Titanfall is definitely like one of my favorite shooters of all time, like both 1 and 2. Um but yeah, I think it's really cool because it, it is a source engine game, but it's like modified source engine. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's source engine, but it's modified source engine. So basically they keep a lot of the cool, like quirky stuff, like with the, the air strafing and like the, the gravity and movement. Um, but obviously it's the graphics are different. Um, and, you know, they change, they kind of change things as they needed, which both good and bad there's there's some weird weird bugs in the game that are kind of unfixable but i think like everything about the game is just very smooth like the gunplay movement um even the way that the abilities interact and stuff like that and i think that's a big thing that sets it apart from other brs that made me actually want to play it um especially like with the abilities it's kind of like a a consistent factor in your gameplay so like no matter what your no matter what your loot is or anything you'll always have you always know, like, your character can do, like, this or that. Um, and that also makes makes fights play out very differently. It makes it kind of a bit more of a... Makes it a bit more of a tactical battle as opposed to just, like, I, I have the better position, I win. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes it, it, it makes it a lot more... Makes it a lot more... Fa- it makes it favor the aggressive players a lot more. Because, you know, you can actually, like, siege buildings with certain characters. And, um... It just generally encourages you to not just sit in a building all the time, even though even though that is a a, a valid like play style and you can you can do it and be successful because there are characters for it. Um, there are also characters that counter it. Yeah, from what I've played, which was very little of Apex, like when it came out, uh, I did notice that it feels good to you know do the gunplay and like the game itself 
feels really good. I just have such a disdain for like the battle royale setup. And I know it does, it is different, and there's modes and stuff like that. It's just like, I just cannot find enjoyment from running around and then maybe seeing a person and then like killing them or just dying. I, I don't mm -hmm. know. It's just not, it just doesn't gel with me. So I just don't really play many of those games uh, at all. But I have said in the past, Battle Royale, when applied to anything that isn't a shooter, I, I kind of like where it's like, yeah. take a game that exists where it's like Tetris, but now it's a battle royale. I'm like, all right, I'm in. I'm into it. Like Bomberman, but now it's a battle royale. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> uh, so just take a genre and then shove that into it. I'm like, oh, this is kind of interesting. But yeah, I, I the also like aspect, um, no. I also think the idea of like a game with some form of like RPG mechanics as a BR would kind of be cool. Like I was actually thinking, um, um. This is actually again. This later on the list. Uh, Doom Eternal. They had like a there's like an upgrade system in that game, right? It's not necessarily like RPGs, but I I was playing and I thought for a moment like what if it, like what what if there were just a bunch of like demons fighting each other and there's this one Doom Slayer in the lobby? See, that would be really fun. I love that. Yeah. I love asymmetrical multiplayer. Uh, like Left 4 Dead, the when you play as the zombies versus the humans and stuff like that. Like I love mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. That's super fun. Yeah, that would be fun um yeah it's it's weird i'm looking at some of my games and uh would you hazard to guess what uh, this is not even i don't even know what this this is like my top like eight game or whatever it's my top seventh game would you like to guess which souls game it is it's a uh, souls dark, game dark souls 2 it's dark souls 2 which standard it's standard dark souls 2 by the way, not scholars. Oh, Two hundred twenty-six no. <laughs> hours. Let me let me find scholars too, because scholars probably has an additional couple hundred hours. Um, but yeah, uh, do you like Dark Souls too? Um, so have you I played it? You have, right? I I have played it. I didn't play it very much. Like I just kind of like got in, finished it, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm putting it down. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was it wasn't that it wasn't as bad as people make it sound. You know, it's got a lot of like weird weird things going on and i think I, I could you can definitely feel that it wasn't made by like the same people mm -hmm. um but i think it's it's still a souls game which you know i like the concept as long as it's from 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 soft like you know using their using their foundation um, yeah and i agree with that and it is like when i say like i don't like this game it's like still better than most games it's just like my yeah. least of favorite of the the souls games and like it's so funny i have so many hours in it because i played dark souls one and then two was coming out and i was so excited for two that i put so many hours into two <laughs> and all the pvp was really good and the pvp is objectively pretty good in dark yeah. souls 2 and the multiplayer and then they expand it in scholars um it's just like the design philosophy was just like okay people like dying in dark souls one let's make it the funny hard game like that's what people like about the game that you die in it, and it. So yeah, the, so that's... when you play Scholars, I was playing it recently on stream. I was trying to do a pickaxe only run because I just did it in Dark Souls one, mm -hmm. and it was fine. Um, you're you're playing Dark Souls two, and you walk to like the first area, and you hit an enemy, and there's I think literally like twenty five enemies in the first area, and I'm like, why did they do this? Like, why is every enemy area? a giant turtle man just fell on my head now i'm dead it's like every area is just that it's like well that's funny funny guys there's seventy thousand enemies and they despawn because you can't farm them and there's soul memory and there, there's just so many mechanics that are awful but there's a lot of yeah. good mechanics in dark souls too i don't know it's a controversial game now for me because everyone mm -hmm. seems to love it and say like play that one first and i'm, I'm like <laughs> no it sucks it, it kind of sucks compared to one, three, and oh anything else. You can play El play Elden Ring. Well, I don't know. Maybe not play Elden Ring first because you'll be trying to jump in all the other uh, games. If, if really somebody confused. says to play Dark Souls two first, they are evil. Most people in my stream chat when I was playing were like, "This is my favorite one," and I and all well, my friends told me to play this first. Or actually, I had a lot a lot of people say, "Oh, my friends said play Dark Souls two first. It's the easiest one, or whatever." And then they fell off of the series. They're like, I, I didn't like Dark Souls 2, so I fell off. It's like, well, I don't know. Dark Souls 2 is 
It's a weird one. It's not. It doesn't feel that fun to play on replay. I'm like, yeah. I'm walking to No Man's Wharf, and I'm like, this is well, this is this segment. <laughs> Have you have you ever seen those like a uh, slap contest videos where it's like you know one skinny guy that's like slaps a big dude and it does nothing, and then the big seen, dude just slaps yeah. him back and he gets like knocked out. <laughs> that that's how I view Dark Souls too. Yeah, but which one? Are, which one are you? I guess I guess you're. Well, actually, at the beginning the of the game, dude. you're the skinny dude. By the end, you're the the big dude. Pretty yeah. much in that game, there's a big yeah. snowball effect. Yep, definitely. But the thing is, it's like not. The thing that's challenging about Dark Souls... I mean, Dark Souls 1 is a joke, like, easy-wise, if you play that. I, I, you haven't played Dark Souls 1, right? I, I actually did play it on my... It was free on um on the Xbox uh, Marketplace. I played I played a lot of it, but I don't think I quite finished. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that game kind of, like, craps out toward the end anyway, because I think they yeah. ran out of time or money. Um, But, I mean, that game is really good, and I've mm-hmm. really had a lot of fun playing it again recently um however yeah it really is not that hard like especially on replay yeah Uh, where dark souls 2 i've beaten bloodborne i've beaten all these games going back to 2 i'm like this is i'm dying more than any of these other games um but it's just because there's 72 enemies like surrounding me and i the whole point is just like waste your time and go slow on certain things i don't know no uh, dark souls 2 is still a great game it's just annoying to play <laughs> yeah i guess since we're talking about dark souls i actually do have dark souls 3 in my top 10 it's so it was apex with 1993 hours and actually i had kovacs with 218 hours so that's just a name trainer. what is that game kovacs it's literally, it's literally just a name trainer because i i switched <laughs> to playing mouse and keyboard when i started playing apex so i just name trained a bit um that's cool yeah dark souls 3 um So yeah, we were already on the topic of Souls games. I think what's cool about them is so people perceive that they're like very they're very difficult, but I actually think it's um what the games are actually doing is that it's not necessarily that it's hard. It's like testing your ability to to adapt to the situation. Like you know, lots of bosses they actually expect you to die a lot, so you can like recognize their patterns and things like that. Um, and I think a problem lots of people run into is they try to do like the same thing over and over again. And think like, oh, I just didn't dodge fast enough or something. Um, but I think how they actually want you to approach the bosses a lot of times is you like, you try to put yourself in different situations and see how they react. Like it's almost like you're figuring out the AI, and then you think like, okay, you know, this attack takes like this long, so I just I just dodge now and I'm fine. Like you know, I can dodge this attack early, I can dodge this attack late, um, things like that. But I think like, I think it's just not talked about enough that the game like it teaches you how to extract information from from death which i think is something that's important in pretty much every single game actually yeah and also dark souls the souls series they're basically just metroidvanias that are like in they're like 3d action metroidvania where mm-hmm. you, especially dark souls 1 where you like go back and forth and some of the less linear ones uh you're going around you're picking up your different items and stuff like that and there's a lot of mechanics that if you don't know the mechanics you're gonna have a way harder time like for example in dark souls one you start that game if you start that game and you don't know what you're doing at all you're gonna have some random weapon you're never gonna upgrade it you're never even gonna understand what upgrading is your stats are gonna be awful you're gonna just like put all your points into the fake stat i don't i don't remember if dark souls one has the fake stat that does nothing (laughs) the fake stat no there's there's like it's like resistance or something yeah it's there's like a stat it does like nothing yeah um you're gonna make a lot of mistakes and and when i played dark souls one i had to restart i think twice because i just like i I, my goal was to get a katana and i didn't know where katana was so i went Mm. to blight town like really early and then got stuck in blight town because i couldn't leave because i was yeah i couldn't do any damage um but eventually, you can figure out, okay, I want to do a strength build, I want to do a dex build, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then that knowledge carries over through every other game, and you'll learn more and more as you play. Uh, which why going back to Dark Souls 1 is so easy, it's just because it's the simplest of those mechanics. I have not played Demon Souls or the remake. I played some of Demon Souls, actually, the yeah, original. I, I never ended up playing Demon Souls. Uh, so I can't really talk to that. But Dark Souls, at least... Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. 
I think that like so Dark Souls the builds aren't as extreme as some other RPGs. I think like they the play style is generally similar unless you're doing like a magic or like a a bow build. Like if you're using a melee weapon, you're generally looking to do the same thing, but one one thing I did find kind of cool is I always I always do like like strength builds and stuff like that and I uh, I can't remember what the weapon was in Dark Souls 3. It was it was like that giant hammer where you could like gather rocks. Oh, I don't um, know what that is. Yeah. Give me a second. It's not, I, I was thinking of uh, Dark Souls 2. I actually had, actually, this is kind of the duality of Dark Souls 2. I remember doing a recent playthrough of that game off stream that I had a ton of fun in, where I used the smelter hammer, which is the giant chicken wing, le- or the giant chicken drumstick leg that you can spin around and like knee people in the head. That was a ton of fun. Um, mm-hmm. There are some wacky weapons and builds that you can do. Uh, did you find the the weapon that you're thinking of uh yes it was leto's great hammer um so i think dark souls 3 i think the poise stat was like broken or something well in one it really is broken it's like busted good i don't know if you mean broken bad broken bad like i think it like actually didn't do anything unless you had like a very specific like full set of armor and leto's great hammer and that was like the build i did and what i ended up doing Mm -hmm. is like so with Leto's Great Hammer, you can, like, do, like, a your alternate attack is, like, a spin or something that, like, gathers rocks from the ground. Um, and it gives you, like, poise, I think. Hmm. And so what I would do is I'd literally do that. I would charge up an attack. The boss would just be hitting me. And I'd just sit there and take it. And then, like, when you smash the hammer on the ground, the rocks, like, explode or something. And I'd just hit the boss for, like, half its health bar. Dark Souls 3 is so weird to me because I remember enjoying it and I've played it multiple <laughs> times, but I almost can't remember any single thing that happens in that game besides the skeleton bone zone. I yeah. genuinely can't remember, like, a boss, really. <laughs> like, it's it's really kind of, like, blended into my knowledge of the other games. I don't know why. Uh, maybe Dark Souls 3 isn't really as memorable as um, something like 1. Yeah, I think... So the thing with Dark Souls 3 is that, so it, they made it after they made Bloodborne. Um, mm-hmm. And so they kind of tried to mix some of the Bloodborne mechanics in there. Like, it's a faster game than the other Souls games, especially, like, with the bosses. Um, and I think it had, like, a, a lot of, like, just crazy, like, stuff. Like, the bosses started getting, like, re- really out there. The we- There were lots of, like, really strong weapons that had, like, really cool effects. Because I think this was the... I think this was the first game where they really had, like, the alternate attack thing. Like, the skill attack. Oh I, yeah, okay. I don't believe there might have been like some cases where some weapons had something unique in the older Souls games, but no, yeah, there there's there's stuff, and two, there's a lot of stuff too, like where you can yeah. do special moves, especially on the DLC items. I think this was the one where they made it like most common. I can't remember though. Yeah, I would assume as they went on, they just it, it because it's the same else. weapons a lot of the time, but they just gave them some additions to the move sets and stuff. Yeah, but like the mo- the moves that started getting like a little more complicated. There were like combos in this game, kind of like Bloodborne, not quite as like, I guess like complex. And obviously, you didn't use them as much because you're not like, you're you're not playing Bloodborne. You're not zooming around as much and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think there was lots of experimental stuff in the game. Not all of it worked. So I think the reason why it might be a little less memorable is because it was kind of just like a. They just kind of took ev- <laughs> it took stuff from the other Souls games and just like mixed them into one. So it wasn't as much, like, original stuff as it was, like, riffs on what already existed. Yeah, I can see that. Like, I, I'm I'm struggling to even think of one area in that game. I'm now thinking of, like, the intro where there's that mimic, like, right at the beginning of the game where all the, like, the pilgrims or whatever are, like, those guys. There's, it's just again it's like hard to oh, describe oh, because I, I think there's I, I a know, dragon I know, you, I know what you mean I know yeah what you mean. yeah, yeah the, the castle with the dragon on top like, yeah yeah, it's, yeah again it's all like of it just feels wrong. like is that a fever yeah. dream am i just misremembering um, i think part of the problem is that like lots of the stuff in dark souls like lots of the areas are li- like you've literally seen it before yeah so so it's like it, yeah again like it's it's just stuff from other Souls games. Like, some of the areas are literally the same. Like, they, like you literally go back to old Souls games areas. Yes. Um, not, no spoilers for Dark yeah, Souls no. 3. What was that game? No like, spoilers. 72 years old now? <laughs> yeah, it came out in, like, <laughs> what, what, 2016? I don't know. It feels like old now. Old. Damn, um, 
It's a boomer game. We're, we're out, can, we're can out we of go, spoiler warning territory. Can, can we go back to your aim trainer game? How many hours do you have in that? And what is it? I gotta um, look this up. So 218 hours. Um, <clears throat> and basically what it is, it's like a, it's a, it's a unreal game, like made an unreal engine. And it's kind of, basically like the core of the game is that people make these like scenarios for aim training like they use they use like the workshop that the game has for it and um they they train like various things like like your tracking um shot timing things like that um and you know lots of people they'll like make make playlists of scenarios that are meant to like isolate uh specific parts of your aim um, some of them are general, some of them are like game specific, like there are playlists that are specifically for Apex Legends and like the the skills that are most important to aiming that game. Um so yeah, I think like it, it's just, it's just cool for for practicing generally. What is it called again? Uh it's Kovacs, so it's K O V A A K apostrophe. Oh, oh, I see it. Yeah. I um by the way so I typed in aim trainer in Steam and a game called Anime Armpits came up and anime that's the only thing. Armpits. So yeah, I don't I, I was like this can, probably isn't let me see it. See if I can find Anime Armpits if I search aim trainer. Yeah, type aim trainer. <laughs> it might be <laughs> Hent- yeah. Hentai aim trainer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um I man. okay, so it is your an a, you have an actual gun. For some reason yeah. I thought it was like you're just clicking on points of the screen mm-hmm. like you're like orienting a um <laughs> something now yeah. does the gunplay feel like the games that it's trying to emulate no nah, not not at all it's um, literally just so you can click on things yeah the guns generally have like no recoil and it's just like pure pure well it's saying practice. here cloned game physics um yeah so th- there are um there are scenarios that do that you don't really like use them very often because it's like uh, it's hard to describe but like like they can replicate like the recoil of a gun in the game and you like a spray pattern yeah but it's it's just it's just generally better to just kind of practice your your aim without the recoil because you'll naturally control the recoil anyway um you know that's also something that it's, it's also just better to practice recoil in the actual game yeah I feel like, like I'm uh it's a young man's game aiming. I'm I'm washed yeah. before I even began. My eyes just aren't quick enough. Yeah. Well, I mean so we, what, we are, what's we your, are technically uh, zoomers, so it's just not, uh, not all hope is lost. I don't know. We're we're somewhere in there. Yeah, we're, but we're right at we're right after the millennial cutoff, unfortunately. <laughs> what's your uh what's your next game? Uh my next game. It is Halo Master Chief Collection. Oh, uh, okay. Is there a specific Halo game you put the most hours in? Um, it's between it's between Halo Three and Halo Reach. Um, so Halo Three, I think like two thousand nine was when I first played it because that was when I first when I first got an Xbox three hundred and sixty, and um, I got into like FPS games initially. Uh, you know, obviously like memories of like custom games and stuff like that, and doing like dumb stuff with my friends. Um. I also remember it, it was actually so. So I played the um, I played Combat Evolved when I was like really young, like on my on, on my uncle's like Xbox. But I remembered like nothing of it. So when I hopped in Halo Three, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll play the campaign. I'm like, what what the hell is going on? <laughs> I just completed the campaign. It was it was like the shortest campaign in the Halo series too, and it was like it was literally just like essentially the the final act of Halo Two. So I'm sitting here like, wow, I don't know any of these people. People are dying. What's going on? It is funny to think about, like, yeah. I, I feel like back in the, the younger days, uh, I would do things like that, where I would get the third game in a series, uh, n- most notably, like, I played the Sly Cooper games, which I don't know mm-hmm. if you're familiar with, uh, but I played them in the order of one, then three, and then maybe two, a little bit of two, and it's just like, uh, I guess, here's spoilers for Sly Cooper, um, ser- the franchise, there's a character named Bentley in that game who's a turtle, the first game he can walk and you don't, he's not a playable character. The third game he's in a wheelchair and he's a playable character. He's on like a rocket propelled oh, wheelchair. Man. And I'm like, what happened between these games? And also, I mean, there is a little like cutscene of what happened. And I'm like, man, I missed a lot in two. Like, damn, who um, paralyzed him? Like, my God. Yeah, literally. And in two, I did play a little bit of two. 
Uh, I actually should stream it because I streamed the first game. Um, I played a little bit of two, and he's walking in that game, and he's really slow and bad. Uh, but in three, he's like way better because he's like in the rocket wheelchair and can like <clears throat> place bombs and stuff. He goes crazy. Wait, actually, that, I don't even think that needs much of an explanation. A, tur a turtle in a wheelchair, actually, that just sounds like an upgrade. Yeah, I mean, he he goes faster. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, like, like weapons and stuff because yeah. he's like an inventor, dude. Well, anyway, I, I completely flung off topic. <laughs> I don't even remember what game we were originally talking. Oh, yeah, Halo. Halo, yeah. Um... John Halo. Yeah, Halo is a cool game. Nowadays, I think it's a little, it, it's hard. Like Halo is a really hard game to like iterate on because it, it's a very simple game. You know, it's an arena shooter. I I think the the cool thing that Halo Three did is like lots of the maps had like some sort of like mechanic that that gave them an extra layer. Like they had these like uh, like spinning wheels and things like that, and like li little like rooms that you could get into for flank routes and things like that. And I think like lots of the innovation for that series kind of has to come from the map design, which I I think it makes it very difficult to iterate on it. Um, mm. Because, like, I, when 343 got the Halo games, they tried to add more mechanics onto, like, the player themselves, like, you know, sprint and all that stuff like that. Um, but the reality is that Halo actually puts most of the mechanics in the world. Like, you know, it's not it's not the controls that you have, it's the things you can interact with that actually make the game special. Um, and I think, I, I think like, I, I, I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer, but I think like Halo as a series is kind of overstated its welcome a little where it's to the point where like, I don't, I don't know how much they can keep, keep working with it because I think Halo 3 was when it kind of peaked as far as like what you can really do with it. Like Halo Reach, they kind of tried to add the armor abilities and stuff like that. And those weren't very, very well received. Um, yeah, they did. They did have some cool map stuff. But as an outsider to Halo, because I never really had any nostalgia, I never really played Halo. Um, I played some of it on PC. The when they came out with the collection. Um, as an outsider, kind of looking in, when they did add things like, oh, we're gonna have, uh, the different mechanics like in Reach, like and stuff like that, and loadouts and stuff like that. People were like, yeah, we don't like this. Just bring back the old. Like, have it be the same game every time, but like. But, but then they're like, but it's the same game. And I, are people still playing Halo Infinite? I, I remember um, hearing about it. I played some of it, and then I just completely forgot about that game. It's rough. So I, I did play Halo Infinite a bit on launch. Um, I think they had, like, a lot of production issues with the game. Apparently, I, I think they either they either have already released Forge or they're close to it. And oh, I heard yeah. a lot of really awesome stuff about that. Like, they had, you can do, like, a... You can literally do your own, like, scripting and stuff in forge like it has like a visual its own visual scripting like language it's like, like you can do so much cool stuff with it but um the problem the problem is inevitably that that it took a year um it's, yeah it's one of those cases where you know you release a game it doesn't have everything people expect it, it's very hard to recover especially when the the primary uh the the primary thing you're saying is yeah this give it a year um, and, you know, I, re I really feel for the people working on the game because, you know, it's I – I've said it already. But it's, it's hard. Like, you know, you, you've already got this game released, and there's just kind of nothing you can do about it because, you know, you already – this was your plan. You know, you've got to <laughs> stick to it. You can't really – you can't just work faster. You can't just re-release it as Halo Infinite 2. That would be ridiculous yeah. and change – just remove one of the characters and <laughs> make, the ba make it have a battle pass instead oh, of lo loot boxes. That would be yeah. insane. No company would do that. Yeah, but besides um, that, I think like <laughs> I I think people had like some issues with like the core gameplay loop and the map design, which is, you know, when when you're when you're already kind of backed up working on like, yeah, we're we're literally completing the game. Um when people are telling you like, yeah, we we actually don't like the the very fundamentals that you've built this game off of. It's like, well, well we're we're, we're we're working on the game. That, that just reminds me of, like, the infinity content of Call of Duty games and how mm -hmm. uh, I can enjoy a Call of Duty game. You know, it's fun to play. But thinking back, like, one, if they're so disposable. It's like once you've played a Call of yeah. Duty game, especially now, it's like, I'm never going to go play the old one now. I'll just play whatever the newest one is. Just th like, yeah. And I guess Halo, Halo in a way is weird, too, because it's like, I would assume 
most people play Halo, what, what, like, 2 or something like that. If they're playing it in Master Chief Collection, they play, like, one specific uh, Halo um, game rather yeah, than I all think, of them. I think it's between... It's, it's actually spread between 1, 2, and 3 um, because they're kind of different experiences. Like, uh, Halo 2 is a lot about, like, the battle rifle, like, the three-round burst gun. Um, Halo 1 is a lot about the, the magnum, like, the pistol. And then Halo 3 was a little bit more balanced out, but a lot of the guns were just kind of weak. And I remember, mm -hmm. I remember like, um, they made the battle rifle like a, a projectile gun instead of hit scan, and lots of people didn't like that. Um, but the game did have equipment. It had, like, lots of really cool maps. And it's generally, like, the smoothest. Or actually, I guess, I guess second smoothest now, because they remastered. The Halo 2 remaster was very, very good. Um, but I think, it, it, I think that had its own issues, like... The Master Chief Collection, it, for those of you who don't know, it, it, it had a lot of problems with, like, servers and, like, stability and things like that. Like, it for years, the game didn't even really function. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Destiny <laughs> and how, you know, it, it has the same kind of... I actually played Destiny before Halo, mm -hmm. uh, Destiny 2, rather. And I got into that, like, when that came out, I was really into it and I was playing it. And I enjoyed it. And then um, after a couple expansions, they just went crazy, went free to play. All that, like, now that yeah. is another game where it's like I don't even know where I would begin if I wanted to play that game again. And like, all the content is not even available. And like, it's completely different experience. And it is something where it's just like I'm waiting for them to do Destiny Three so I can start fresh. Again. Yeah, I actually, I actually played Destiny One maybe like a year after it came out. You know, I completed the story, and I think I did like one or two of the DLCs. And I'm like, okay. What now? Multiplayer, right? I get into <laughs> multiplayer, I get killed by a guy with like, some gun that I haven't even, like, I don't even know that, how to pronounce the name of it. <laughs> the God <laughs> Gigas the yeah, Annihilator. So, and I, I, like, look it up, and I'm like, wait, you can take the loot you find in the game into multiplayer? And, and I, I just quit. Yeah. I liked that, kind of, except for people, uh, for this is this is my generation of Destiny 2 when we were playing PvP. Uh, mm -hmm. It was called uh, the Vigilance Wing was a big one. It was a three-tap, like, insta-kill like rifle oh, basically and i think it was better devils which was like a magnum that was also like could kill people that was kind of like mm -hmm. what people were using when i was playing to give you a, a time period of for people who know i guess yeah the vigilant swing it's so funny because it's just imagine it's a it's a like a semi-automatic rifle thing i think it was like three bursts but if you hit all them you, they just die and like they would just die you're, just, you're done <laughs> the, third, the third shot in the burst is 1000 damage to ensure yeah it's just day. you're done that's it. Um, oh man. Yeah, that was that game was always weird. Uh, but what what's your next game? Um, what number I, are we on in terms of? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Number six. Number six. So actually, uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Okay, interesting um, pick. Yeah. Uh, so I played the game recently after I watched the anime. I thought it was pretty good. Um, the game's really cool. I think it does like does a lot of cool stuff like the way that they do exposition in the game is like awesome like you know it's very like there are parts where you're just kind of getting talked to but i think like it's it's always characters that you're very interested in they're, they're all very very fun like right off the bat um the dynamic with um with johnny silverhand you know the the guy who's like inside of the main character's head like mm -hmm. the character themselves is pretty cool i think like it's it's got that issue with with that some rpgs have where it's like you know you create your character you know they've got a a male and a female voice so it's like obviously they can't go in as much detail with you know, the character themselves as they would want mm -hmm. um you know sometimes you, you can make certain choices that like like you know you can make your character a complete dick with the choices that you make but that doesn't always reflect in some cutscenes. yeah um, but... yeah there's some there's some tonal stuff where yeah, you'll be like, how you have the strength requirement to like throw this man overboard and overboard, and then here's the uh, intelligence requirement where it's like V is now. I played male V, and he's just like, I'm gonna kill you all. And then like one dialogue later, he's like, so I'm a sneaky street kid, and it's like, what? Well, okay, this is interesting, but I mean, that's just yeah. that's just those kind of games. Or if you're gonna have voice acting in like diverse choice like that, that's just gonna happen. Yeah, um, I actually heard that the female V voice actor was like a lot better um i like I, male v i yeah, I, I, I started minded. over i started over i, I made it like, i beat the game as male mm -hmm. v and i was doing a corpo female melee v but i kind of fell off the second playthrough yeah. but uh yeah it was it was good yeah I, I didn't mind male v um 
I do think like the the like origin that you can give to your character. I kind of wish that was a little more impactful. Yeah. Um, because I feel like it's just like some dialogue choices every once in a while. It's not really the ones that, like. It's not the ones that. It's very frequently not the ones that like actually move the dialogue forward. It's just kind of like a side thing. See, I was thinking about that recently, uh, with this game specifically, and I'm like, at one one point of me is like, okay, it would be really cool if they had more impact and they really split off. And it's like, what if what if this content, it would give game replayability, but then from a developer, it's like, okay, do we want like a third of the of the people playing the game to like not to like miss all this content? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like we're gonna design all this stuff for a third of people not to even care or see it. Yeah. I, I did like that there were some like small things that would make the story branch off. Like um for example, one of the early missions where you're like um I, I think it was uh the maelstroms when you're going into like one of their hideouts or something. The one mm-hmm. that's like Oh um, yeah. With the, the you get the gun turret thing, right? Yeah, yeah. The one that was like disguised as like I think it was an all foods. <laughs> I think that's what it was called, like all <laughs> foods or something like that. It's kind of the vertical slice mission yeah. where it's like you can tell there's actually a lot of choice sort of yeah. there and it's like this is this is for like the trailer like oh here's all my choices and then later kind of yeah. is like yeah there's not as many yeah but um one cool thing i noticed about the mission is like you can navigate the conversation in a certain way where you actually don't have to kill anybody um and if you do that there's a later side quest where you meet one of the people from the maelstrom gang that you actually didn't kill yeah and, i got um, that i think yeah yeah i think they like give you a gun or something and like they make sure like i, I believe they make sure that, like the mission doesn't doesn't go to complete shit and you're just murdering everybody in a club yeah yeah um, it, that was that was cool um yeah. there was moments like there's moments in that like i always thought that game even when it was buggy and bad when it came out i always thought it was actually pretty a good game i think a lot of yeah. there's a meme now where it's like people are going around like it was always a good game it's like well the balanced take on that is the gameplay narrative story was always kind of cool mm-hmm. it's just like a, it was a disaster of a launch um it was buried under lots of bugs yeah, and the fact that the cars like don't have driving AI and like there's no the police just appear and it's yeah, just, there's a lot um, there's a lot of nonsense in that game. Yeah, I hear they're actually updating the police very soon. Um a- along with the the DLC that's coming out, which I am I'm excited for. Um But yeah, I think like they're they were saying like they haven't said exactly what they're gonna do. They just said like they're gonna do like a police and max tech overhaul. Ooh, maybe um, they'll be able to drive instead of just yeah. appearing yeah and then behind they're like you. adding they're gonna finally add the ve- the vehicle combat i think oh um, wow and yeah i remember like in, in every open world game there's a point where you're like okay i've done everything i might as well piss off the police right right like, <laughs> yeah so, you know i just i just murdered a bunch of people and got the police called on me and i remember i i got to the like five stars or something and they called in like max tech and these guys just kind of spawned in and I'm like, wait, wait, this isn't how it worked in the anime. What's what's going on? They, where's, the, where's the big helicopter and the, the red lights and, <laughs> and, the, and the cool stuff? And and then literally, like, I, I had this this um perk that, like, let me respawn instantly when I died. Like, instead of, like, having to go back to a checkpoint. And I remember literally the first thing that happens and one of them just looks at me, shoots one bullet and I die. And I'm like, what yeah, the hell is they, this? <laughs> there's, like, no, there's, like, they exist just to be like, all right, reload your save. Like, yeah, they, they exist to say, oh, okay. It's, like, pointless. Enough, stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was ridiculous. <laughs> they just did way too much damage. And I was, like, completely maxed out, like, best gear in the game, max level, super optimized build. I'm just like, well, damn. <laughs> well, yeah, th- that game, um, eh, that game's good. I- I'll wait. I think I'll replay it again when it's like more, you know, updated. Yeah, apparently worth the waiting um, on. apparently the DLC actually takes place before the game ends. Um, oh, okay. I think, I think it's supposed to change some of the dialogue too. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I might I might do a new playthrough and like you know do the DLC at an at an appropriate point. And then like see how it changes the the story a little. It'd be cool. So what what would be your uh, how many games are we on? We're on the eighth game now. Um, seven. Okay, seventh game. What is your seventh pick? Um, so Remnant from the Ashes. Uh, okay, I have yet to play this. I own it, but I haven't played it. Yeah, so this game is a it's a third person shooter. It's Souls like. Mm-hmm. Um, this game was really cool. It was like a it's like a whole post apocalyptic like weird like alien zombie like monster thing um 
lots of really cool bosses like the the atmosphere of the game is just awesome like it's you're, you're in these like abandoned like cities with all these like this like ash and like fire in, in the air and stuff like that um it's lots of these like freakishly transformed like people and monsters all around there there's one where it was like it was like a dragon but it was like um it had all, all these like spores and like i think like plants coming out of it and like it like fired like electricity and all these weird things like it's it's just a crazy game like who, whoever was behind all these ideas is just a, a madman because it's like it's just the perfect mix of like a of like a post apocalyptic like modern third person shooter and like a souls game mm-hmm. you know, it has like lots it brought in like lots of the fantasy aspects um you know obviously it has like has like all these cool items like you know there's lots of really cool armors um there's some melee weapons that are really nice uh you can do some some pretty cool builds as well like they're like skill trees um unlike souls games which don't really like quite have that um i can't remember i i did finish the game but i didn't play ever play the dlc i actually i bought the dlc and i never played it uh I, i've got to get around to that eventually um you know it's it's got it's got a drop in four player co op hmm. i think it was a really cool addition it also has like a it has a little like a roguelike mode as well where it's like you start off with nothing and there's like shops in like a hub area and you like That's go fun. into it essentially like takes you through like the areas of the game um with all this like procedurally generated stuff um little yeah, chalice just, dungeon kind of esque yeah uh and you can obviously of course you can do co op in those as well this is a really cool game it mixes like third person shooter dark souls and like even roguelike stuff in the regular game oh it actually yeah yeah the regular game is is just a straight up roguelike like the areas the areas are never the same between two people's games um like the terrain where the enemies occur uh there's like a set each area has like a set of bosses that you can run into like you'll get like different paths that lead you to different bosses on like different playthroughs it was a, it was a super cool game actually i need to look up the studio that made it really quick because i remember they yeah. they released the dlc and they were like i think they're kind of sad because like it was the only dlc they were able to make um because they had to work on another game because they're like one of those studios that like helps with a bunch of different games um let me see yeah there's gunfire <laughs> games yeah i picked up the game on sale and i was mm-hmm. meaning to play it and uh that was a pretty that was a pretty good endorsement for the of the game uh yeah. i i don't know too much about it just besides the fact that it's like it sounds like something i would enjoy mm-hmm. uh did you find the studio uh yeah gunfire games um trying to figure out what game they were working on that Hmm. that they had to stop working on remnant from the ashes it was some other Uh, souls like puzzle game i don't know just like there was a time period where everything was souls like for a while Mm -hmm. like with lords of the fallen which i did play a little bit of on stream and that game is not that good uh i think they're getting in there's like a reboot coming or something of that game uh as well Mm -hmm. but uh, this game had two dlcs one of them was like a kind of smaller one um and the other one was like a yeah the bigger one is the one that i didn't play um but yeah i think i i was just so impressed with this game because it was on sale and i I, like i didn't expect much because it's like you know i'm just like oh it's just another another souls like game you know it's Mm -hmm. it's gonna be like a like a especially since it's like in, in the third person shooter genre it's gonna be it's gonna have all this weird like balancing like some of the bosses are just gonna be cake walks i'll just walk circles around them but like no i was just, i was very impressed with like almost everything about this game and uh just for the sake of time because we're gonna be wrapping up here shortly uh what are your i think was it last two um Last three, actually. But Last three, okay. Yeah, yeah, so there's Doom 2016. Oh yeah, uh, that game was great. Yeah, Player Unknown Battlegrounds and Endless Space Two. Um, what is what is Endless Space Two? It's a it's a 4x game, like an RTS. Oh okay. Um, so it's like you you're just you pick a species, you're like in space, and like your goal is to like explore the entire galaxy, pretty much. You can play you can play it like with other players. It's kind of it, it, it's kind of competitive multiplayer like you know you can you can you can allow them to help you with stuff like you can make treaties uh you can like share your map with another player so like you 
it makes them easier it makes it easier for them to navigate like the end goal is of course to like control the entire galaxy so like you'll probably end up fighting but yeah it's a cool game i think uh, we talked about this on the podcast before and, I, and just the word yeah. 4x makes my brain melt and i'm just like yeah. <laughs> i just like can't remember it I, just like i don't know it's what like it, it it is weird we have a lot of overlap in terms of certain games and t- genres of games uh and then we also have that divergence of like i think where you you will play games that kind of have a lot of mechanics that are you know mm-hmm. you have to learn a bunch of things and the games i play tend to be more like grindy and like grindy and just like i'll put it on while i watch a podcast or something like or listen to a podcast and just yeah. kind of zone out rather than being like I've got to figure out the exact way to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and also maps scare me. <laughs> Although I know uh, yeah, endless space is not really maps, but it's you know, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> space maps. Yeah, yeah. Then the other game, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. I I do not like this game very much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was, was like the first battle royale, basically. Yeah. It was, it was like it runs like awful. Yeah, freshman year of college, all my friends were like playing this and Overwatch. I'm like you know I'll, mm-hmm. I'll just play it with them um yeah i guess i don't know why this... you you would play that game over uh apex or fortnite or any of those yeah, like no it, it does it even run good any like yeah still or like it, it ran I, awful I no clue on yeah, everything i remember they added like new maps and stuff and it got weird i know um, PUBG mobile is pretty popular in certain areas uh yeah but the actual like PUBG, I, I don't know. They, then they tried to like make it more like Fortnite and like goofy, with their whole marketing of like the frying pan. Like, oh, guys, look, yeah. we're so goofy. They had like they had an Evangelion crossover. I remember <laughs> that was that was weird. It's like they had the world that they, they could have. I mean, Fortnite came and ate their lunch and was just like, hey, we can run on everything, cross play, and it's cartoony and kids like I, I, everyone likes this. Kids like it because it's cartoony and whatever and free. And like adults like this because oh I can be the best that's I can get my like hey guys I'm flexing that I'm the best but uh, I think we should uh wrap it up we didn't have time to take questions today uh, but if you have questions you can email us at h y e p podcast at gmail dot com uh, that's where you could send any questions to us but I think we'll call it a day on the podcast. Uh, before we go to overtime. So I've been Matt, a.k.a. Matt Fondude, and James, you've been you. Yes, I've been James, a.k.a. James O4E. Uh, you can find us on the social medias. I'm on the Twitch and whatnot, and the YouTube and the Tic Tac for the kiddos, the Tic Tacs. Yeah, and I'm on, I'm on most of the things. Twitter, Instagram, uh, Twitch and YouTube I might use one day. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Instagram, Spitter. Yeah, Blitch, all you know, all the usual, all the usual. Blick block. I'm on, uh, I'm on Bookface. Bookface. I'm on, I'm on Facebook, Bookface, MySpace, uh, my place. I'm on any space you can my find place. someone socially. Yeah, I, I, catch me on VR chat. I hang out near the Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> I hang out near the model of Garfield. You'll see me. I'm, uh, I'm using the Eustace uh, model from Cards the Cowardly Dog. That's my persona. Um, yeah catch me there that's the end of the podcast bye